Hey everyone, in this video, let's try to solve one more SQL problem. Now this was shared to be in a comment in one of my videos. It's a very interesting problem and straight away, let's look at the problem and try to solve it. So this is the problem statement. We have been given an input table. This is a transaction table. And then we have been given what the expected output is. Before we can understand what the given data is, let's read the problem statement itself. So we have been asked to write a query to return the account number and the transaction date when the account balance reached 1000. And they are also mentioning that please include only those account whose balance currently is greater than or equal to 1000. Okay, so here we have the input transaction table and we have some data for a few different accounts and each record in this table will represent one transaction. Okay, so let's try to understand this first. So the very first record is a transaction for account one. So we have the account number mentioned in the first column. Then we have the transaction date in the second column. Then we have an indicator which tells whether this transaction was a credit or a debit into the account. And then what was the transaction amount that happened in each of this transaction? Okay. So if I consider just the account one, I can see that we have, I think, four different transactions for account one and it happened on four different days right and all of this transaction as you can see here is credit so this means that the amount was credited into the account one okay and this amount that is shown here is basically the transaction amount that amount that happened in each transaction this is not the account balance as per the given problem statement we need to find the transaction date corresponding to each account when the account balance became 1000 right now here this is just the transaction amount that is 100. So this is not the account balance. Okay. And then on the second day, that is on 21st Jan 2022, again, a 500 amount was credited to the account. So the balance became 100 was already there in, on the previous day. 500 got credited on 21st. So this balance became 600 here. Okay. And then on the next transaction, that is on 22nd Jan, again, 300 was credited. So the total balance became 900. And then on 23rd Jan for account one, 200 was credited. So the account balance became 1100. Okay, now just by considering account one, I can say that the account balance reached 1000 on 23rd Jan 2022. And if you look carefully after this, there is no other transactions for account one. So as per the final account balance, I can tell that account one, the balance is still above 1000. So I can put account one as part of my output. And that is what is shown here. So account one, the account reached a balance of 1000 on 23rd Jan 2022 right so this is what i need to do for account one now similarly when i go to account two i can see there are three records so on 20th jan 2022 account two got a credit of 500 so its account balance is also 500 and then on 21st jan again 1100 was credited so 1100 plus 500 is 1600 so the account balance is 1600 and then on 22nd jan account two got a debit okay so debit means the amount was removed from the account that is 1000 so again the balance became 1600 minus 1000 that is 600 Okay, so as per the current balance, that is after all the transactions, the account balance for account two is actually only 600, right? It's not 1000. Hence, account two is not part of my final output. Okay, so that's one thing to remember. Similarly, now for account three, there is just one transaction and the balance is 1000. So I can consider account three and its balance 1000 was reached on 20th Jan. And that is what is mentioned here. For account four, on 20th Jan, the account balance was 1500. Okay. And then the next day, again, there was another transaction of some debit that is 500 was debited, but even 500 was debited. The total balance is still 1000. That is still good for my threshold that is given here. So I can still consider account four to be part of my output and it reached 1000 on 20th of Jan. Right. And that is why for account four, I had 20th of Jan. And finally, for account five, I can see that the balance is only 900. It has never reached 1000. Hence, account five is not part of my final output. So basically, I need to write an SQL query, which is going to read the data from this input table and come up with an output which would look like this. OK, so we need to basically do two different things. The first thing is we need to see that after all the transaction, if the account balance is greater than 1000 or not, if it is greater than or equal to 1000, only those accounts I need to consider. That is point number one. And the second is on which transaction date did the account reach 1000? That one also I need to print here. 
Okay, this is basically what I need to do. Now, in order to solve this problem, I, I will be solving it in PostgreSQL and I'll be using the PG admin tool. I have created the table with the given input table. Now, input data. Now, all of this scripts, the data set and my solution, everything I'll be posting in my blog. I'll leave the link to my blog in the video description. So definitely check that out. I'm sure many of you guys would have a different solution than the solution that I'll be giving. If you have a different solution, definitely share them in the comments below. Okay. Now let me try to solve it in my own way uh, in PG admin tool. Now, as always, whenever I am trying to solve a problem, I try to break it into multiple different parts and I'm going to follow the same approach here as well. Now, what I basically need to do is I have this table and I have this transaction amount, but I do not have a column, something like an account balance, right? Which tells me what is the total balance of the account after each transaction, right? So it would be good if I can come up with that column. Now, in order to come up with that column, basically what I need to do is after each transaction, I just need to do a cumulative sum. So I need to sum all of this amount and then maybe print the balance in another column, something like that. But in order to do that, there is one more thing that I need to consider and that is all of this amount that is mentioned here are having the positive symbol, right? But then if I look at this credit and debit column, this will basically tell me which of this amount is credit that is credited into the account and which of this is a debit basically which should be removed from the account, right? In order to make it easy, it would be better if I had all the credit amount with the positive symbol and all the debit amount with the negative symbol, okay? So once I have this positive and negative symbol sorted out, then I could just sum up all of this amount for each of this account to get the total account balance. Okay, and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing in my very first step. So what I'll do is I'll keep this maybe star, maybe I don't need star, I don't need all of this column. So I need account number. Okay, and then I need the transaction date. Okay, and then finally, I need the transaction amount, but I don't need this debit credit column. So what I'll do is I'll put a case statement here saying that case when debit and credit is equal to debit, if it is debit, I want to basically uh, change or make the sign as negative, right? So if the debit credit flag is debit, then I want to say the transaction amount into minus one, okay? So maybe I'll just move this to the next line here, okay? So I'll just keep it here and yeah, so I can keep this here, okay? So if if the debit credit flag is debit, then I want a negative symbol to be added to this amount. So I'll just multiply the amount with minus one. So this will basically reverse my uh, sign, right? Else if it is credit, then I just want to maintain the same transaction amount. Okay. And I'll end this case and I'm going to name it like, let's say, uh, as transaction amount. Now, if I run this, now you can see that I have this transaction amount column and all the amount is same, just the sign has changed wherever the flag was debit, it has now having a negative symbol. I think there is only two transactions with debit, so only these two amount are having negative. Okay, so this is my very first step. The next step that I want to do is for each of this account, I want to sum up all of this amount and then I can see whose amount is basically, whose final balance is greater than or equal to 1000 or not right so in order to do that i need this to be my input data so what i'll do is i'll move this entire thing into a cte so i'm just going to say with cte as and i'll move this to the right and i'll put this inside the parenthesis okay and then here maybe okay i'll just move this to the right again and here i'll just tell maybe final data as and here i'll write my sec next query that is select from cte okay now this will become my input table right and here what i want to do is okay first of all i'll do a star i'll fetch all the columns and the second thing that i want to do here is i want to sum all the amount for each of this account right now i could do using group by clause but I don't want, if I do, if I use group by, I can sum this amount, but the number of records will reduce, right? And that is why I want to use window function because I want all of these transactions to be present because I want to find out on which day the amount became 1000, which I'll be doing in the next step, okay? So for now, I just want the total account balance for each of this account and that should be corresponding to each of this record here. And that is why I'll use window function, okay? Now using which window function can I sum all of this amount? right actually what i can do is i can just use the sum aggregate function as a window function okay so what i'll do is i'll say sum and i'll say transaction amount okay and i'll say here over and i need to partition the data based on each account 
right? I need to do the sum of this amount for each account. And that is why I'll say partition by account number. Okay, that's fine. And then I want to sort the data based on the transaction date. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to say order by transaction date. Okay, so I think in ascending order and this whole thing, let's say I'm going to call it like uh, maybe my balance, right? So I'll just call it like balance. I think that's fine for now. Let's see what's happening with this query. And I'm going to write my main query outside. So I'm just going to say select star from final data. Okay. And now if I run this, I'm getting an error. Okay. I missed a comma here. Now let me run this. I'm still getting an error. And I think, okay, so here the spelling is wrong. It should be final data. And now let me run this. And now you can see that I am getting some output and I have the transaction amount and I have the balance. Okay. But if you look carefully, this balance is actually not what I wanted. So if I consider for account one, the balance of account one should have been 100 plus 500 plus 300 plus 200, which should be 1100. Okay. But here for each of this record, the balance is something different, right? Now, if you have watched any of my previous videos where I have solved this kind of queries, then you would know that this behavior is because of the default frame clause. So whenever we are using a window function, there is something called as a default frame clause. So what a window function basically does is it's going to create a window within your result set. So here, since I'm doing a partition for account number, it's going to create one window for each of these distinct accounts. Okay. And within that window, again, there is something called as a frame. Okay. So even though we have created a window here, SQL will only have access to the default frame. And by default, the default frame is basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention it here. And that can be mentioned like this range between unbounded preceding and I think unbounded preceding and current row. Okay. Now, this command here basically is the frame clause. Now let me run this and you can see that the output is still the same. So what this means is whether you mention this or you don't mention this by default, when we are using a window function, this is the default frame clause that SQL is going to consider. Now what this exactly means is, so when SQL is processing the very first record, it's going to have access to each of this window because I have partitioned the data based on each account. So this all these four records from account one will be one window, but within that one window, only the frame that falls within this range will the SQL will have access to only that frame. Okay. And what is that frame that falls within this range is unbounded preceding. So range is between unbounded preceding. Unbounded preceding basically means the very first record of your window. That is the very first record here itself. And current row in this case will be the first record because we are processing the first record, right? So when SQL is processing the very first record, it, the frame clause only has access to this very first record. So sum of 100 will return 100. Now when SQL is trying to process the second record, unbounded preceding will be the first record of the window and the current row will be the current processing record that is the second record. So 100 and 500 both of this record is accessed by the frame. Hence 100 plus 500 is 600. Hence the sum returns 600. When SQL is processing the third record unbounded processing is the first record that is this one and current row is this third record. So all these three records SQL is having access to. So it will do a sum of all these three records which will be 900 and so on and so forth. Okay. Now this is a default behavior, but I, what I actually want is I want to do a sum of all of this amount, which be belongs to the same account, right? So in order to do that, I can change this current row to something called as unbounded following. Okay. Now this will basically give access to until the last record of that window. So even when SQL is processing the very first record, it will have access or the frame will be in the range between the first row of the window until the last row of that window. So all of this record will get access. The sum of all of this should probably return 1100. Now let me run this and see if it works and it is actually working. So now this is actually the sum of all of my transaction amount for each account. Okay, so this is fine. And this one, I can basically call it like maybe my final balance, right? So this is my final balance. So what I wanted is if I go back to my problem statement, I only wanted to consider those account whose balance at the end is greater than or equal to 1000. So straight away in my final or in my main query, I can put a filter here telling that where the final balance is greater than or equal to 1000. 
Okay, so this will straight away eliminate any account whose final balance is not 1000. So only account 1, account 3 and account 4 remain, right? Account 2 and account 5 do not have the balance greater than five, uh, greater than 1000, hence they are eliminated straight away. I hope this is clear and you have basically understood one step of this solution. Now we still need to do few other things, right? So we have done, uh, we have basically eliminated the unwanted accounts whose balance is not greater than 1000 or equal to 1000. Now we need to see on which day each of these accounts balance became 1000 and only fetch that record, right? Now in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm again going to create another I'm going to create use another window function, basically the same some window function, and I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Okay, so I'll just put this whole thing here, and I'm going to call it like let's say current balance. Okay, so I'll just tell current balance, and let me just run this and let's see what happens. Now here I have my current balance, and you can see that I have basically not mentioned the range between clause that is the frame clause so this will treat the default frame clause hence the amount is basically different from what i have here okay i hope that is clear so why do i need this is because using this i can see that on 20th jan for account 1 the balance was 100 on 21st jan for account 1 the balance became 600 and 22nd jan the balance became 900 and 23rd jan the balance became greater than 1000 right so now what i can do is i can use this and basically i can use a case statement and whenever the balance became greater than 1000 i can put a flag here like one for all the other places i can put a flag zero and then i can filter the data where the flag is one okay so that's what i'm trying to do so what i'll do is i'll keep this as it is and here i'll just create another one so here i'll just tell case when this whole thing is greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 1000 okay then okay so maybe i'll put this then in the next line then one else zero and i'll say end and this is going to be my flag okay so let me just run this and you can see that i have created another column so here it is zero 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 and this is where the balance became greater than or equal to 1000 hence the flag is one okay and then here also for account three the flag is one because this is the only transaction and its balance is 1000 and for account four there are two transactions and in both the transactions the balance was greater than or equal to 1000 right now first of all before i can eliminate any one of this record let me filter the data based on the flag is one because wherever the flag is zero i'm actually not interested that basically should not be part of my output right so here i can just tell I'll put another filter here telling that where flag or and flag is equal to one. Okay, now if I run this, now you can see that I am only left with four transactions or four records. And this is basically fine, but there's only one problem. So for account one and account three, I have basically got the data. But for account four, there are two transactions where the balance was greater than or equal to 1000. I only need to fetch that date when the balance became 1000. So basically I only need to fetch the first day when the balance became 1000, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to minimize this a little and here I'll just fetch the columns that I need first. So what columns I need is I need the account number and the second column that I need is the transaction date. So I'll say transaction date, okay? And the next thing what I want to do is, I only want to fetch the very first transaction, right? Because both these transactions, the balance was 1000. I only want to fetch the minimum transaction. And how can I fetch the minimum transaction is just by grouping the data. So I can just tell group by account number. Okay. And here I can just tell minimum of transaction date as transaction date, right? I think that's all. Now let me run this. And now you can see that for first account account one it is 23rd jan and for third and fourth account the date is 20th jan okay and this is exactly what i wanted in my output okay so i hope this solution is clear i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and if you have any other solutions to the same problem definitely share them in the comments below thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one bye